Bible, the ushers, would you encourage them to do that as we begin? Others are on the way, we'll get started. After Abraham Matthew will come forward. Lead us in prayer and begin this service as we look to the Lord, the source of strength and comfort, who blessed us yesterday, who is able to bless this service and the following intermen. Let's pray together. Pastor Abraham Matthew, please. Let us pray. Our precious Heavenly Father, the Creator of the heavens and the earth, thank you, Lord. We come to your throne of grace this morning, hallelujah, because of your Son, Jesus Christ, and what he has done at the cross. Thank you, Father. Lord, we thank you for your gracious comfort Praise you, Father. of the Holy Spirit to each one of us, hallelujah, as we celebrate the homecoming of our dear one. Yes, Father. Lord, I lift up every one of us who are here, Thank you. Father. Especially the family members. Hallelujah. The dear sister. Amen. The son and the daughter and the grandchildren. Jesus. Lord, I pray that you Hallelujah. comfort each one of us. Your Holy Spirit guide us and strengthen us this morning. Hallelujah. Lord, I commit the service to you. Yes, Father. I pray that you the be with us in that. From the beginning to the end of the service, that your hands will guide us. Yes, Father. And I commit every one of the servants of the Lord to your mighty hand as they are leading the service. Hallelujah. Lord, I pray that you strengthen them. Jesus. And you enable them to bring comforting words to each one of us who are greeting. Thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord, for your presence in our midst. Hallelujah. We praise your name and we worship you this yes, morning. Lord. In Jesus' precious name I pray. Amen. Amen.
Celebrate the life of dear Kunyuti Chai. Uh, we're going to read Psalms 90, very familiar scripture that we normally read during the homegoing services. So I'm going to read Psalms 90 from the NIV version. More than welcome to follow me. <clears throat> Starting with the verse 1 Lord, you have been our dwelling place throughout all generations, before the mountains were born, or you brought forth the whole world. From everlasting to everlasting, you are God. You turn people back to dust, saying, Return to dust, you mortal. A thousand years in your sight are like a day that has just gone by, or like a watch in the night. Yet you sweep people away in the sleep of death. They are like the new grass of the morning. In the morning it springs up new, but by evening it is dry and withered, we're sad. We are consumed by your anger and terrified by your indignation. Ye have set our iniquities before you, our secret sins, in the light of your presence. All our days pass under your wrath. We finish our years with them mourn. Our days may come to seventy years or eighty, if our strength endures. Yet the best of them are but trouble and sorrow, for they quickly pass and we fly away. If only we knew the power of your anger, your wrath is as great as the fear that is your due. Teach us to number our days, that we may gain a heart of wisdom. Relent, Lord, how long will it be? How compassionate are your servants. Satisfy us in the morning with your unfailing love, that we may sing for joy and be glad all our days. Make us glad for as many days as you have afflicted us, for as many years as we have seen trouble. May your deeds be shown to your servants, your splendor to their children. Verse 17. May the favor of the Lord, our God, rest on us. Establish the work of our hands for us. Yes, establish the work of our hands. Amen. I know we are saddened, but at the same time, we are rejoicing in the presence of God because we have a hope. But soon and very soon, our Master will be back. And we will see our dear community time. And that, that is our hope as a believer, as a child of God, we have a hope. And I just want to mention three verses from this scripture. Verse 3, you turn people back to dust, saying, return to dust, you mortals. You know, all of us are created by our God. He is our master. He created us. He created us from the dust. He is the owner of our life. Even though we are here today, he is the one who created us. He has the every right to call us back when he's coming. When he's coming. And the, the same God who created us from the dust. Verse 3 we just read. He turned people back to dust. And at that point we have no right to ask him any questions. One of those days if God's coming terrorists, we all have to go through this. But as a children of God, as a child of God, we have a hope. We read in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 1, For we know that if the earthly tent we live in is destroyed, but we have a building from God, an eternal house in heaven, not built by human hands. Yes, our life is temporary here, but our God is building us a house that is eternal, that is not built by human hands. There are no sorrows, there are no sickness there, Nothing in this world will destroy that body. 
Nothing in this world will destroy the building. Because that house, that eternal house that God is preparing us, it is not built by human hands. And that is our hope. One of these days, we will be with the Lord. We will be in that house. I thank God for giving you the time, the chance to be with the Lord. That's what we call homegoing service. Yes, we are sad, but in the heaven, God is rejoicing. The angels are rejoicing because of our dear community time. Verse 10, we read, Our days may come to 70 years or 80. If our strength endures yet, the best of them are but trouble and sorrow, for they quickly pass and we fly away. Amen. That is, again, it is, we're here just a temporary. This is not our home. This is not our place. We are looking for a place that we will spend our eternity. Whatever we do in this world will determine our future. Whatever we do in this world will determine our eternity. So I thank God for the opportunity who serve the Lord faithfully. Every Sunday when he comes to church, he worships the Lord with everything that he had. I've been part of Bethany for the last four years and I've seen the man of God. Never complained, never discouraged in the midst of his sickness. He always has always had a positive attitude. Even the last Sunday when he came to church, he asked me, to, he pulled me to a corner and said, when can you pray for this person? You know, he always tell me a couple of people, can you keep him in your prayers? Even though he's going through sickness, even though he's going through problems in his life, he always was encouraged us. He always, you know, never disappointed. He always in a positive attitude because he knew this earth was just a temporary. He knew that he's going to fly away. He knew one of the days he will be with the Lord. He never complained. He left a great legacy for us, especially for the answers. He left a great legacy. Again, our life in this world is very short. One of those days we will be with the Lord. In verse 12, Teach us to the number of days that we may gain a heart of wisdom. That's one thing we must know that the life that we have, we always need to know God teach us to number of our days. Like I said, when you time, left a great legacy for us. For the children, for the great grand, great children, he left a great legacy for us. Like I said, he worshiped the Lord faithfully and he, he served the Lord faithfully. Let us follow his first step. And we have a hope in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, when the trumpet sound, the Kunjitan will rise up. Amen. The Bible says, those who have died will be waste to live forever. And we who are living will also be transformed. That is our hope. The trumpet will sound. The trumpet of God will sound one of those days. Apache will be there. Kunjitan will be there. And those who are living in this world will be transformed. And I'm going to close this in a minute, and I have this to the family, and I want to say on behalf of the entire BFG youth, we want to express our condolences. And especially to our many, and I know our youth spent many years, many months, and many days, spent time in his house and prayed with him in our weekly prayer every Wednesday night. Kunji Jujan is our number one person. We always pray for him. I'm going to we'll continue to pray with you. We will stand with you. We will minister with you. And you have our word and the belly, the youth of the church will stand with you again. May the presence of God, may the peace of God continue to be with you and to the family. May the shalom, may the peace of God be rest upon you. May God bless you. Amen. 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 Thank you so much. Hallelujah. To edify us through knowing that our God is Jehovah Shalom, His peace, His presence, His tangible. We will sing a few songs to worship the Lord during this time. I would like to as the congregation, those who are in the back, please move into the areas. The ministers of the gospel, would you please come to the first row? It's available to you. The family members, the first row on this side, is also available. Please make yourself. We appreciate your cooperation. Thank you so much. Hallelujah. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Those who are able to stand up this morning, would you please stand up as we worship? This Jesus, you are still the cornerstone. You're the foundation of your own. We put our trust in you this morning. Though life may come and go, we are just at last, we wither, and we are gone by the end of the day. So Lord, we thank you, Lord, there's one person that is unchanging, and that is Jesus Christ. We worship you this morning. Thank you. Oh, 
cannot trust the sweetest ring, but only trust in Jesus' name. As you cross the wall, cross the
Several years ago, as many of you know, Uncle, as family, we went to pray through, and God extended his life. Amen. Almost 76, just a month away, but it was a perfect time of God. Amen. On May 7th, 10.50 a.m., God, in his sovereign wisdom and plan, you, decided to call the dear uncle back to his eternal home, Amen. who is the father of all spirits. Thank God for his plan and his purpose. Hallelujah. For the years he lived, as we heard earlier and yesterday, he lived a blessed family life. God blessed them with wonderful children and grandchildren. Wherever they were, they were really an impact to the kingdom of God and to the body of Christ. But he thanked God for the source of strength we all received and were blessed with. I will not be very long, just a couple of points, and I want to continue as the program has already outlined and as also we have to be on a, a mindful of the time this morning. In the last five years, his life was even more meaningful in ways than we can imagine. As we found out and as family informed us, there was strong prayer from the family and the church to stand behind him. And God, in his gracious plan, extended six years. And those six years were even more fruitful than the previous. As myself and my wife and Grace and the children of our, and along with our youth would go and minister to him, he was even encouraging us to continue to pray. Because he knew there is power behind prayer. And he did not give up. Even in the last five, six years, the opportunity that he got when he goes to the doctor's office with IMT, he would lay down the tracks and he would also say, God has extended my life. Amen. 
When he goes to buy grocery in the Patel Brothers store, he would witness to them. They came to our church when the family members received Christ as Lord and Savior because of the powerful witness that he was. Amen. And even for that child who was going through autism, came to our church, even though we did not see a tremendous change, there was changes because the faith through the man of God was imparted and we were all impacted one way or another. And in the last few months, after the month of March, as he went through the pneumonia, it was a struggle to regain, but he did regain his strength. We believed again that God would extend his life. But it was the sovereign plan of God, because God's ways are higher than ours. Amen. God's thoughts are greater than ours. Yes. And in his sovereign time, that morning, I believe when he was there in the last few weeks, when we had to visit him, he was aware, he was conscious, he was speaking to us. He said, Pastor, only thing we need is just pray. And in the last few weeks, even last Sunday, we had a the Sunday before we had a chance to see him. We spent time with the family. And we were so grateful. Even then, his faith was still strong. He did not give up. And two, within two, three days, he deteriorated. But every moment, because of the medication, he would look around. He would say, where is his dear wife? He would ask for Ronnie Auntie. He would ask for his children. Where's Eddie? Where's Lena? Where is Jolly? Where's Shibu? And thank God, the children were surrounding him. And the grandchildren surrounded him. And I believe Wednesday morning, he asked, can pastor come by and rush from there? And and now even the afternoon he went, in the evening he went, but early Saturday morning, in the surrounding by the loved ones on the earth, in the presence of the Almighty God, Hallelujah. as angels beckoned him to come back to his eternal home, he said, I have to go. I know it is painful for you, but my Father is in heaven waiting Hallelujah. for me. A place where there is no sickness, a place there is no struggle, the place no more tears, he is gone and be promoted to the glory. Thanks be unto God. We have victory through Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank God for uncle. He is in a better place. Hallelujah. Families, friends, we also miss him. He was very close to us. But we also have an overwhelming joy and the assurance through the word of God. He is in a better place today than ever will be. Thank God for his life, his role model, and I will add maybe one or two things later on as the time permits, but truly a blessed life he left behind that we can follow, continue as we are in, a, in this service. A lot of times we wonder, should we have to say these things during a homegoing service? I believe we absolutely do. I'm sure you can do. I'm sure you can do. I appreciate you. I'm sure you can do. I'm sure you can do. Honor those who need to be honored, respect them. And we did that, and he did that to us. It was a mutual thing. But above all, his life, what God did through, we must remember because we can be changed and impacted. And above all, we can be preparing our life because we don't know when our day is coming. So may the Lord continue to comfort and give the peace which transcends all words and Everything that we face, may the Lord continue to be with you. <clears throat> Want to ask for eulogy a family member called George to come forward to take a few minutes, and after that, we will have words of hope from the family members. <coughs> Dear family and mommy and mama, church friends, respected pastors that are gathered here this morning in this special occasion of celebrating the homeborn of our dear community time. Greetings to you from my family and myself and 
in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. For those of you who does not know who I am, my name is Paul George. I am the other son of the movie time that he doesn't talk very often about, but I come from his own bowels, but uh, we have a great relationship. I am uh, the son-in-law of Amachi's um, uh, older sister. My wife is Jessie. It's been 30 years since I came into this relationship with Kunur Chen. Kunur Chen and my mama have a special place in our life in mentoring and making who we are. Their life is set on example, as Pastor has reminded us. You will never consider them as movers and shakers of our community. But let me tell you, they led a very simple life, but they are the people who will continue to pray that the people that put them their heart. If each and every one of us could follow the examples that Abbotsman that Community Ten has did. Let me tell you, God can do mighty and great real work in the place that we live and in the families that we live. May God help us. Charles Spurgeon once said, trust in the Redeemer's strength. Exercise what faith you have, and by and by he shall rise upon you with healing beneath his wings. Go from faith to faith, and you shall receive blessing upon blessing. This is what Kunyo did. He was the possessor of such a blessed and fruitful life. He trusted in the Redeemer's strength, and he exercised that faith God gave him. He rose up to the wings of God till his faith carried him to the heavenly home. Hallelujah. God is great God. He's still doing the work in our lives, either we recognize or we notice it or not. God is a God of promise and He keeps each and every one of His promises. About four weeks ago on April 10th, something came into our heart about that day, so the eighth of the night, that uh, me and Jesse need to come over and spend a day with Kunu I said, Jesse, yeah, well, we want to go see, and Jesse said the same thing, we want to go see the time. And we had the privilege to fly over for one day on Sunday. And spent about four to five hours with Kunu Chan. Most precious moments. I know I've been no, I've been know him for the last 30 years, but those moments, I can see that the hope that the man of God was full of. As you know, Romans 5 5 says, hope doesn't disappoint because the Holy Spirit, because the love of God can be inhibited in our hearts by the Holy Spirit. Amen. Hope does not disappoint us. Because the love of God is within us. That was the example. Atan was the true example of that love of God that was within him because hope was coming out of him. Where is it now? Proverbs 13, 12, it says that the deferred hope is, makes the heart sick. Without hope, I think it's David McDonald once said that, without hope, man equals nothing. Zero. When we lose our hope, we become nothing. We cannot do anything. Teacher of God. This Kunyu Chan was diagnosed with this about six years ago in 2010. After we all went to India uh, for my mother's going home, uh, just his mom in Bombay. But you know what? Never he had given up hope. Every single time I spoke to speak to him on the phone. Even on that day on April 10th when I spent the time with him, we were talking about God is going to heal us. We're going to go together to India. We want to visit our brother. We talked all about it. Because you know what? The word of God is a living word because that gives us hope. Amen. Psalms 91 that we read that day, the one that lives in the shadow of the Almighty. Huh? It what a great hopeful psalm that we were able to sing to read together. And with the voice that he would sing, sit there and sing, Yeshu Maratavan, Yeshu Maratavan. 
Hallelujah. I'm so blessed to be part of this family. The, the many, many characters I was thinking about and went through my mind, I just wrote jotted down a couple of them. His faith, his hope, and another great thing, his transparency. If he loves you, he'll tell you that. Son, I love you. He doesn't hold it within him. He might not have nothing to do, big things to show about himself, a big car, a big house, or whatever, you know. But you know what? He was prideful on the things that God had blessed him with, and he lived in the blessed life. And that pours into each one of us as a family, to Eddie, to Jolie, to their families, to the grandchildren. In the, in, the, in the life that is ahead of them, if there is anything, is that the legacy that the man has left behind often for them is that word of God. Trust in the word of God. Be prayerful men and women. God can make the possibilities possible. I truly believe that. And he proved that in his life. His life was extended for six years to see and enjoy God's faithfulness. That may God may continue to lead us and guide us in these ways. Not like how Job in, his, in the deepest of his disappointments, he said, my life is like, is fast, is swifter than a beaver shuttle, and my life is without hope. But let us live a life with hope, even in this time. Yes, it is hurting for us. But you know what? There is a greater joy that he is with the, with the, with the, with the gathering of the saints in the heavens and worshiping and rejoicing in the presence of God. Where there is no pain, no tears, there is no sickness anymore. Isn't that what Ezekiel Hopkins, the great preacher, once said, many blessings are promised to our outward man here in this life. And hereafter, it is to be made a glorious and incorruptible body, like unto the glorious body of our Lord Jesus Christ. It is to be clothed with light, and crowned with rays, never more to suffer injuries without or disease with uh, injuries within or diseases with without. So God's presence may continue to lead us. At this moment, I also again want to extend to my condolences to dear family members, and also I just want to bring up to the recognition that Supin had called me from India, and he also expressed it to tell that his condolences and Joey Chan and Amama and his sister and family. May God richly bless us in this time and the continued ministries that ahead of us. Praise the Lord. Thank you, <clears throat> Thank you. and uh, as I'm calling a few other friends and especially the families that are related to Uncle, please come and take two to three minutes each. Brother John Verghese from Oklahoma, Pastor George Verghese, and after that, close friend of the family, Dr. Samuel Matai is also here, also have a couple of minutes. I also want to extend on behalf of Pastor Via Gurujurti his condolences uh, to the family. He's unfortunately he's not able to be here. He's traveling to Detroit, but has conveyed his thoughtful prayers and deepest condolences to the family. Now, Brother John Workies, and following that, Pastor George Workies. Nin visramati laneyum visuddha gernam kande ayvaru me sorgatil idil param bhagya mundo kande ayvaru me sorgatil idil param bhagya mundo Yesu e prana aga ninno.
ദുഃഖസഹകരമായ സമയത്ത് എന്ത് പറയണമെന്ന് ഞാൻ എന്താ പറയുകയാണ് ഒരു നാൽപ്പത് വർഷത്തിൽ പരമായി സ്നേഹവും പരിചയവും ഈ പിന്നോട്ടാനും കുടുംബത്തിനുമായി എനിക്കുണ്ട് ഞങ്ങൾ ഒന്ന് പൂനായിൽ നിന്നായിട്ട് മെഗ്രി ചെയ്തവരാണ് അന്ന് ഞങ്ങൾ ഒരു സഭയിൽ ഇരുപത്തി ആരാച്ച് വന്നു അന്ന് ഓർഡർ സ്ഥലത്തായിരുന്നു അതിന് ശേഷം അവർ ഇനി ഓർഡറിലേക്ക് കടന്നു വന്നു വളരെ വർഷങ്ങൾക്ക് ശേഷമാണ് ഞങ്ങൾ ഒക്കെ കടന്നു വരാൻ ഇടയായത് എന്നാൽ പലപ്പോഴും വിളിക്കുവാനും സംസാരിക്കാനൊക്കെ അധികം ഇടതന്നിട്ടുണ്ട് ചില വർഷങ്ങൾക്ക് ശേഷം അവർ ഈ ക്ലാസിൽ വന്ന ശേഷം ഞങ്ങളെ കാണാനായിട്ട് ഒരു സ്ഥലത്ത് പോയിട്ട് ആ വഴി അഗ്രഹമായി വരികയും ഞങ്ങൾ പലത്തിൽ വരികയും വളരെ സമയങ്ങൾ സംസാരിക്കാനും ആ സ്നേഹം പുതുക്കുവാനൊക്കെ സാധിച്ചു നന്ദിയോടുള്ള സ്വാഗതം ചെയ്യുന്നു അവർക്ക് ഈ രാജ്യത്ത് വന്നില്ലെങ്കിലും ജീവിക്കുവാനുള്ള എല്ലാ മുഖാന്തരം വഴിപെടും ദൈവം സുഖത്തിലെ ദൈവം അവർക്ക് ആരെ ഇന്ത്യയിൽ വിശേഷിച്ച് പുനായിൽ ദൈവം ഒരുക്കി കൊടുത്തിരുന്നു താൻ്റെ ദാസൻ ഇതിനോട് ചേന നല്ലൊരു ജോലി പുനായിൽ ഉണ്ടായിരുന്നു പ്രിയ അമ്മ ശിഷ്യർക്ക് സെയിൽ ടാക്സിൽ ഏറ്റവും ഉയർന്ന നിലയിൽ ജോലി ചെയ്തുകൊണ്ടിരുന്നു അപ്പോൾ പലപ്പോഴും എന്നോട് വ്യക്തിപരമായിട്ട് പറഞ്ഞിട്ടുണ്ട് ജോലിക്കുട്ടി എനിക്ക് അങ്ങനെ എനിക്ക് പോകണം എന്നുള്ള താല്പര്യമൊന്നുമില്ല എന്നാൽ ഫാമിലിയുടെ റിലേറ്റീവ്സിൻ്റെ നിർബന്ധങ്ങൾ മാത്രമാണ് ഞാൻ പോകുന്നത് കാരണം അവർക്ക് നല്ലൊരു സെറ്റപ്പ് അവിടെ ഉണ്ടായിരുന്നു എന്നാൽ ദൈവത്തിൻ്റെ അഭിപ്രായം അങ്ങനെയല്ലോ അത് കടന്നു വന്നതുകൊണ്ട് കുഞ്ഞുങ്ങൾക്കൊക്കെ നല്ല ഭാവി ദൈവം ഒരുക്കി കൊടുത്തു അവർക്ക് ദൈവത്തെ സ്തുതിക്കുന്നു മോട്ടപ്പെടുത്തുന്നു അവർ കർത്താവിൻ്റെ വേലയ്ക്ക് വേണ്ടി വളരെയധികം നല്ല കാര്യങ്ങൾ ചെയ്ത ഒരു കുടുംബമാണ് അവർക്ക് അവിടെ സ്വന്തമായിട്ട് നല്ലൊരു ഭവനം ഉണ്ടായിരുന്നു അവർ പോരുന്ന സമയത്ത് അതിന് ഇവിടെ വന്ന് വരുന്നതിന് മുമ്പ് തന്നെ ആ ഭവനം പൂനായിലുള്ള ഞങ്ങളുടെ സഭയ്ക്ക് ഇന്ത്യ കൊണ്ട് ഒരു ദൈവ സഭയ്ക്ക് അവർ ഭാഷണേരായിട്ട് ഞങ്ങൾക്ക് അത് വാങ്ങുവാൻ സാധ്യത ദൈവം കുറേ ഇടു വളരെ വില താത്താണ് ഞങ്ങൾക്ക് തന്നത് അതൊക്കെ ഞാൻ ഈ സമയത്ത് നന്ദിയോട് കൂടി ഓർക്കുന്നു ദൈവം ഏറ്റവും അനുഗ്രഹിക്കപ്പെട്ട ഒരു കുടുംബമായിരുന്നു പിന്നെ ഉച്ചാൻ്റെ കുടുംബം ഇന്നും അവർ അതുപോലെ തന്നെയാണല്ലോ കർത്താവിൻ്റെ ദാസന് ദൈവത്തിൻ്റെ സമയത്തെ വിളിച്ച് അക്കരെ നാട്ടിലേക്ക് ചേർത്തു വളരെ പ്രത്യാശയോടുകൂടെ ജീവിച്ച ആ ഒരു കർത്താവിൻ്റെ ദാസനെ അവർക്ക് ഞാൻ ദൈവത്തെ സ്തുതിക്കുന്നു ഈ പുതിയ ഭവനത്തോട് ബന്ധപ്പെട്ട് എനിക്ക് വളരെ കാര്യങ്ങൾ പറയാനുണ്ട് അദ്ദേഹത്തിൻ്റെ പേരിന് ഉച്ചാൻ്റെ മകളെ വിവാഹം കഴിച്ചിരിക്കുന്നത് എനിക്ക് ഏറ്റവും എൻ്റെ ഏറ്റവും സ്നേഹിതനോ അല്ലെങ്കിൽ എൻ്റെ ഏറ്റവും വിചാരിച്ച സഹോദരനോ എന്ന് പറയാവുന്ന ജോണച്ചാൻ്റെ മകൻ സ്റ്റാൻലിയാണ് പിന്നെ മകളെ വിവാഹം കഴിച്ചിരിക്കുന്നതും എൻ്റെ ഏറ്റവും അടുത്ത ഒരു സ്നേഹിതൻ പി വി ജോസഫ് അത് തമ്പിച്ചാൻ്റെ മക മകളെയാണ് മകൻ വിവാഹം കഴിച്ചിരിക്കുന്നത് പിന്നെ പ്രിയ ജോണച്ചാൻ്റെ പെങ്ങളെ വിവാഹം കഴിച്ചിരിക്കുന്ന എൻ്റെ ഏറ്റവും അടുത്ത ഒരു സ്നേഹിതൻ ആണ് വിവാഹം പൂനായിട്ടുണ്ട് അങ്ങനെ ആ വിധത്തിൽ നോക്കിയാൽ വളരെ ഏറ്റവും വളരെ ഞങ്ങൾക്ക് സ്നേഹവും വളരെ ബഹുമാനപ്പെട്ട ഒരു കുടുംബമാണ് പ്രിയ പിന്നോടിച്ചാൻ്റെ കുടുംബം നന്ദിയോട് കൂടെ സ്തുതിക്കുന്നു ആത്മാർത്ഥമായ ദൈവത്തെ സ്നേഹിക്കുകയും കർത്താവിന് വേണ്ടി ജീവിക്കുകയും ചെയ്ത കർത്താവിൻ്റെ ദാസനയോട് ദൈവത്തെ സ്തുതിക്കുന്നു കർത്താവിൻ്റെ വരെയെങ്കിൽ ഇനിയും നമുക്ക് ഒന്നിച്ച് അർത്ഥദാസനെ കാണാമെന്നുള്ള വലിയ പ്രത്യാശ എനിക്കുണ്ട് നന്ദിയോടുള്ള സ്വാഗതം ചെയ്യുന്നു സ്തുതിക്കുന്നു ഭൂമിയിൽ എന്താ വരുത്തപ്പെട്ട കർത്താവ് ഭൂമിയിലായിരുന്നപ്പോൾ മൂന്ന് പേരെ കർത്താവ് ഉയർപ്പിച്ചു ഒന്ന് ഒരു ബാല ബാലിയേരെ ഉയർപ്പിച്ചതായി നമ്മൾ ഇവരുടെ കാണിക്കുന്നു കാണുന്നു ഒരു യവനക്കാരനെ അത് സഹമഞ്ചത്തെ തൊട്ട് ഒരു യവനക്കാരനെ എഴുന്നേൽപ്പിച്ചു അതുകൂടാതെ മരിച്ച് നാറ്റമിച്ച് നാല് നാളായ ലാസറയ ദൈവം ഉയർപ്പിച്ചു അപ്പോൾ മരണാനന്ദ ജീവിതത്തെ പറ്റി അല്ലെ ആ ദൈവം കർത്താവ് തന്നെ പോയി ജീവിച്ചിരിക്കുമ്പോൾ തന്നെ പല ദൃഷ്ടാന്തങ്ങളാണ് നമ്മൾ കാണിച്ചു തന്നു അല്ലെയ്യ എല്ലാ ജോലിയായി നമ്മുടെ വായ്പത്തെ കർത്താവ് മരിച്ച് നമുക്ക് വേണ്ടി ഉയർത്തേറ്റ് സ്വർഗത്തിലേക്ക് പോയിരിക്കുന്നു അലിയ നമ്മളെ ചേർക്കുവാനായി കർത്താവ് വേഗം വരും അറിയാൻ വളരെ പ്രത്യാശയോടുകൂടെ കർത്താവിൻ്റെ അറിവിന് വേണ്ടി നോക്കിയണമെന്ന് അലിയ കർത്താവിൻ്റെ അറിവിന് വേണ്ടി ജീവിപ്പാൻ തക്കണം ദൈവത്തെ കർത്താവിനെ സുദൃശ്യാവായി സ്വീകരിച്ച് അലിയ ദൈവത്തിനെ അനുസരിച്ച് ഋഷിക്കപ്പെട്ട സ്നാനപ്പെട്ട വിശുദ്ധ ആത്മാവിനെ അറിയപ്പെട്ടവരായി ആ നിത്യകാവുള്ള നാളെ കേൾക്കുന്നതിന് വേണ്ടി പ്രത്യാശയോടെ ഒരു ദിവസവും നമുക്ക് ഉണർന്ന് ജീവിക്കാം ഞങ്ങൾ ഇവിടെ പ്രാർത്ഥനാരിക്കരണത്തിൽ ഈ കുടും
Pastor George Burgess is coming forward. I want to convey our deepest condolences to the family members, Brother Joe's and Darley from Atlanta, and Pastor Kurian and Shirley from Dubai. They have extended their condolences to all the family members. Apostle Paulus uh, in 1 Thessalonians chapter 13, uh, 4, verse 13 to 18, it says there, Brothers, I do not want you to be uninformed about those who fall asleep or to grieve, the, grieve like the rest of men who have no hope. We believe that Jesus died and rose again, and so we believe that God will bring with Jesus those who have fallen asleep in him. According to the Lord's own word, we will be with the Lord forever. Therefore, encourage each other with these words. As we grieve our loss, we need to remember what Andrew has gained. St. Paul said that we don't grieve for Andrew, as if we have no hope, because Andrew will be with the Lord forever. Because Andrew's life belonged to Christ, Christ's unending life now belongs to another. And is with God who made him. He is with God who kept him pain free even in the final hours of his trial. He is with God who loved him so much he went to the cross to bear weight of uncle's sin so uncle could give, have his hope. He is with God whom death could not hold in the tomb. He is with God who lives, and uncle lives in glory. We grieve, but in Christ we grieve with a great hope. Kanya, chala washalai, kurumuai, adutala viruwa, katavana sahajjo. Kepo, angulai kandana mwale, utiyashore, wadala prasarwane, wadatore. Nyalai, kriti, nyalai, vidil siri, kijiya, wadai. I kanya, nalil, wadai, Praise the Lord. I want to uh, bring your uh, condolences from my wife Susan and myself and family, also all the the ministries that we refer to, good news for the nation, in India. A few years ago, back in the when uh, the Matthews family came to uh, hope uh, to uh, Dallas from New York, we had an unusual uh, 
uh, meeting in the sense that I, we, after the church, we met them, and uh, I never forget that afternoon. We just had it uh, because we didn't know each other. We were also visiting uh, that time, and uh, so we were just uh, getting to know. But he left, Kun uh, Chen left and met an impression in my photographic memory. I never forget. And his mission for the ministry. So which we are thankful to the Lord. And uh, uh, we wanted to go and, and uh, because uh, uh, we met uh, uh, in our conversation, he told me uh, about the situation uh, with him when he came here about a month ago. And uh, so we planned to go. In fact, we wanted to go and see him on Saturday uh, afternoon. And it was unfortunate in the sense that, that, that we could not uh, see him alive, although we visited and uh, uh, that uh, particular day uh, with the family. I wanted to, at that, that Saturday, I also uh, had the opportunity to read these scripture verses that I'm going to read uh, from uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 15. And uh, it's a wonderful passage about the hope of the world when there is no, uh, when, when we are living in a hopeless world. Behold, I tell you, we are starting with the verse uh, uh, 51. Um, Behold, I tell you a mystery. We will not all sleep, but we will be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye at the last trumpet. For the trumpet will sound. I want to emphasize that word. The trumpet will sound. And the dead will be raised imperishable. And we will be changed, those who know Jesus Christ. For this perishable must put on the imperishable, and the mortal must put on immortality. But when this perishable will have put on the imperishable, and this mortal will have put on immortality, then will come about the saying that is written, death is swallowed up in victory. Oh, death, where is your victory? Oh, death, where is your sting? The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the Lord. But thanks be to God, Hallelujah. who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. In spite of any situations. I want to say to you, Mrs. Matthew and the children, Evie, Lena, and children, and Jolie, and family, and also especially uh, to our friend, uh, Pastor Matthew, uh, Abraham Matthew, and his family, on all the children, that there is a hope. And I know you have that. And I'm so thankful to the Lord that we will see the majority of that in face to face. Because that's a hope that holding the Christian people in the world, in spite of all the things. So hold on to that hope. I know one day we will, the trumpet will sound. And we will be changed. Amen. We will be changed in mortal. We will be changed imperishable. And we will be with the Lord. I want to say this to those who never thought about the hope or who don't have a hope. I just want to say these words. There's no control whatsoever when you ought to be born. There is no way where we would be born or where, what part of the world or which family or which color that we come, what shape we will come. Not, we have no control. And so is we have no control how we will die, where, when we will die in our lives and what kind of circumstances contribute to for the death. But the birth is sure and death is sure. That's all from God. 
because God makes that point, the true point in the life of a person. But in between, there is a life that we live. My question is this morning, those who do not know Christ, do you have that hope that one day you will see Gunu Dijayan face to face? And with the Lord. May God help us to hold on to that hope. If you do not know Christ, accept Him. Put that hope, the hope of glory, Christ Jesus, in your heart. And that He will fill our hearts. And our prayers are with you, and especially in these days of grievance and those who are in bereavement. We pray and thank you, Pastor Chris, for this opportunity and also. We appreciate you. The Word of God is powerful to strengthen us and quicken us and to edify us as well and fill our hearts and minds with comfort and peace. Uh, the grandchildren will be coming forward to sing a song as they're preparing. To Kunyuri Chan, the grandchildren were such a treasure. It was a blessing. You always would have concern for them, and always their names and prayers were so close to them. And God blessed them with eight grandchildren Stacy, Steffi, Stina, and Sophia. And God blessed to Sister Jolie and Brother Shibu, and Joanne, Julia, Janice, and Joshua, to Brother Ebby and Sister Lena. And just one minute, just to the grandchildren, I want to encourage you. I believe a Saturday afternoon, as some of them were there, I said, look, you will truly miss your grandfather. And as a human expression, as God created, you will have sorrow. There's nothing wrong with crying, because even Jesus wept. But in the midst of it, know that God is in control, and he will never abandon nor forsake you. And the other thing that you must know as grandchildren, your grandparents, Abhijan and Amachi, they were not pastors or officially ordained by anyone. But they were soul winners for the kingdom of God. Amen. They were prayer warriors for our city and for our church. And I ask that you capture that heart and that spirit. Run the race wherever you are. You don't have to be in ministry, but serve the Lord wherever you're placed. Take a hold of that, and God will do great things through your blessed life and a bright future He has for you. Songs, song of gratitude.
Praise the Lord. My name is Jenny, in case you don't know me. I'm at the church in school this summer. And I just want to read something that I wrote about the king. When I was young, my siblings and I would talk with our grandparents about our futures. They always tell us about how they couldn't wait to watch us graduate college and get married. But Jesus passing has only changed one thing about our plans. He will not have the best seat in the house. When I think about the life of my grandfather and all that he has gone through, one word, come to, one word comes to mind, resilience. In my grandparents' bedroom, on their dresser stands a little plaque with a verse from Philippians, which reads, Don't fret or worry. Instead of worrying, pray. Let petitions and praises shape your worries into prayers, letting God know your concerns. Before you know it, a sense of God's wholeness, everything coming together for good, will come and settle you down. It's wonderful what happens when Christ displaces worry at the center of your life. This verse defines the kind of man my grandfather became. No matter what he went through, he learned to never complain. It was not until the very end that most people, including me, fully realized the extent of his the suffering. There is another well-known verse in Philippians which reads, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. It is now that I realize where Upachim got such strength. His strength came from the Lord. He learned not to turn to people with his worries, his cares, and his trials, but to turn instead to the Lord in prayer. By testifying to God's strength, Upchin became strong. By testifying to God's love, Upchin became loving when instead he could have become bitter. And in his weakness, Upchin was made by God into a leader. My definition of resilience has changed. It has come to mean people like my grandfather. Thank you. Amen. Thank you. Praise the Lord. For those of you who don't know me, I am Upachin's eldest granddaughter, Stacy. I will be speaking on behalf of myself and my sisters, Steffi, Stina, and Sophia. When we think about our Upachin, we think of a God-fearing, strong, caring, and compassionate grandfather. As you all know, he battled cancer for, those, for about six years. Throughout those six years, never once did we hear him complain or question why he was suffering. Even when he was in pain, he always kept a smile on his face and desired to be with us. We truly have lost a great Upachin. For the four of us, Upachin was the only Upachin we had ever known, as we never had the privilege of knowing our father's father. But now he has gone to be with the Lord. We are fond of our childhood memories of visiting Upachin and Amachi several times a month when they lived in New York. But once they moved to Texas, those visits became maybe once a year. We will distinctly remember the smell of his aftershave, the prick of his mustache on our faces when he would kiss us, his hearty laugh, the I love yous he ended every call with, and above all, his elaborate prayers for all his loved ones. I am sure many of the blessings my sisters and I reap today is a testament of his faithful prayer for us. The good thing is, Apucha is not suffering anymore. Amen. We will miss him dearly, but we can also rejoice in the hope that we will see him one day in heaven. Thank you to all who have helped our grandparents in any way. Words cannot express how much gratitude we have towards you. May God continue to richly bless all of you. Thank you for sharing your experiences and the life that uh, God had used to the dear, dear grandfather. May his legacy and the passion and the zeal for the Lord continue on in all your lives as well. Now I'd like to invite Brother <coughs> Debbie Matthew and Sister Jolie Stanley for reflections. <coughs> Praise the Lord. Dearest Papa, 
We remember our childhood in India when you worked for corporate engineering, working nights most of the time so that you could be with us when we came back from school. You always made time to be a father. We remember how you would play with us, swinging us onto your shoulders and teaching us to ride bikes and fly kites. You came to America and worked hard again so that we could afford to buy a house and to go to college. I remember the first time you took me to the workplace in New York and how the owner wanted the place to be cleaned. Turning around, he handed you the broom. I was willing to take the broom, but you leaped forward without any hesitation and started cleaning. We prayed that the Lord would bless you with a different job, and he answered our prayers when you started to work for a life worth of products until you retired. Our Papa had a full life, and we are very proud of him because he did not care about formalities, but he spoke the truth even when it hurt, especially when he pointed out insincerity in the Christian community. We know how Papa went through very severe pain in 2010 and every year thereafter, but we believe the Lord used this to increase his faith. We praise God that Papa has had a chance to watch his grandkids grow during their earliest years. And we rejoice that he is finally relieved from all earthly suffering. Thank you, Papa, for all you have done for us. We will love you forever, and until we meet again, goodbye, Papa, with lots of love, Mom, Abby, Jolly, and our families. Thank you. Because he lives. I can face tomorrow because he lives of fear is gone because I
want to invite Pastor Finney Samuel, very familiar, close friend of ours over the years we knew from New York, pastor of ICA in New York, to bring the final message for today. Pastor Finney, please come. <clears throat> Praise the Lord. In moments like this, we always look to the Word of God because it's the Word of God that gives us comfort and strength to go through these seasons in our lives. Life consists of various seasons ordained by God. And every season, we can know that the Lord is good, that the Lord is able to take us through, carry us through in every season of our lives. So we give importance to the Word of God because the Word of God can speak in every season, and give us the strength, the confidence that we need to go through those seasons of life. When a dear one's depart from us, it's always painful. No human words can comfort us, but we thank the Lord and His Spirit that grants us the strength and the comfort that we need to overcome such situations in our lives. Thank you. We are very closely linked to this family through physical relationship, through the bonds that we have maintained over the course of decades, and the prayer bond that we have with this family. Amri Andi's grandfather is my mom's uncle. That's a lots of generation. More than that, the acquaintance that we had with the family when they were in India and over here has kept that relationship going on and on. In the Bible, various characters are known through their places that they lived. When they talk about Saul, Saul is known as Saul of Tarsus. Mary and Bethany are known and Mary and Bethany from Mary and Martha from Bethany. As far as this family is concerned, in our small world, there were Kunjitichain and Amniya Mama from Pune. Long before, long after Pune became Pune. So we maintain that relationship. And this morning, we want to extend our prayers and the comfort that the Word of God can give to Amni and Deep to Ebby, to Lena, to Stanley, Joey, and all the grandchildren. We thank the Lord for you, all of you. Stacy, Steffi, Joanne, Julia, Stina, Sophia, Janice, and Joshua. May the Lord comfort you. Want to acknowledge all the men of God who are here. We thank the Lord for them, Pastor Chiki Vergis. Pastor Chris, who is a very good friend of ours, and all the men of God who are here. I want to draw our attention to God's word this morning, Revelation chapter 14, verse 13. Then I heard a voice from heaven say, Right, blessed are the dead who die in the Lord from now on. Yes, says the Spirit, they will rest from their labor, and their deeds will follow them. Father, we thank you for your word. We pray that you will minister strength and grace and comfort in this family, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Then I heard a voice from heaven saying, Right. You and I are surrounded with various kinds of voices. Voices constantly beckon us. Voices are always trying to grab our attention, our affections. Voices have the ability to inform us or to misinform us. 
Voices can guide us or misguide us. Voices can influence us or impress us. Voices are constantly around us, trying to woo us to safety, trying to derail us from the tracks that God has put us. Voices that tend to constantly speak into our lives. And it's all the voices that constantly beckons us. I, as a servant of God, I want to draw your attention to the voice that comes from heaven. For the voice that comes from heaven has the tendency, has the capacity, has the strength to speak peace in every realms of our lives. Voice of heaven can speak hope in an hopeless situation. Voice of heaven can draw us and direct us in the paths of righteousness. Voice from heaven can impact, import strength in every situation of our lives. So amidst all the voices that beckon us, we hold on and we sharpen our ears to the voice of heaven that speaks life into us every moment of our lives. Oh, the voice of heaven, it is so sweet. Oh, the voice of heaven, it is so meaning, meaningful. Oh, the voice of heaven, it has so much depth to it. Oh, the voice of heaven, it can direct us. It would help us to make decisions that will change our destiny forever. It is the voice of heaven that has impacted our eternity. It is the voice of heaven that has changed the course of our destiny. And we thank the Lord for the voice that speaks to us every day. The voice of the Father. The voice of the Son. The voice of the Holy Spirit. Yea, the voice of the angels prompted by the commands of the Lord. Speaking words of life and comfort into us. John the Revelator hears this voice. Saying that I heard a voice from heaven saying, Right, praise the Lord. Yes, we are people who are constantly familiar with what is written. What is written is much more, we give more importance to it. What is written, it lasts for long. And throughout the cultures and throughout various generations, people have given so much premium to what has been written. The Medes and the Persians, they bragged about what they had written. They bragged and they said that the decree and the edict and what they had written could not be repealed or could not be changed. What was written according to them was permanent. But the Medes and Persians with their writings have faded away from the scene. Pilate once said, what is written is written. Well, what was written was written. But I don't know if Pilate really believed what he had told to be written. That Jesus is the king of the Jews. Well, we know that Jesus is not only the king of the Jews. Pilate did not realize that Jesus was the king of the kings and the Lord of the lords. Amen. Praise the Lord. But when the Bible says, we'll write down, write there is so much significance and importance to what Bible says when Bible says right. The word of God as the scripture says it is established in heaven for heaven, forever. The Bible says as Jesus said heaven and earth will pass away but my word shall not pass away. The word of God, the spoken word of God. The written word of God has stood the test of time and it speaks into the life of human beings. It speaks into the life of people changing their very future and their destiny. Praise the Lord. Amen. Right. Praise God. Why right? Because what is being pronounced, what is being mentioned, what is being decreed, what is being declared is so important that it needs to be transmitted from one generation to another. It needs to be given to the next generation.
generation and on and on and on because our God is a God who is eternal in nature and he expects his children to be faithful in transmitting the truth, the faith values to the next generation and that generation to the next generation and hand the baton of faith and hand the truth of God's word which is established in heaven to every generation. As the psalmist says, Lo, thou hast been our dwelling place from one generation to another. Amen. One generation has faced out from this world, but there is another generation and the next generation that stands. Amen. Praise God. And Gunyadichai was faithful to transmit that light, that fire, that truth to his children and to see that transmitted into the next generation. Right, right what? Blessed is the one, praise God. Blessed are the dead who die in the Lord from now on. Praise God. Amen. Yes, death from our perspective looks like a defeat, looks like disappointing, looks disappointing, debilitating. Death looks devastating from our end, but the voice of heaven it beckons our attention this morning to have a heavenly outlook even in this season. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. In every season, God's people ought to be armed with a heavenly outlook. For her outlook determines the outcome of life. Praise the Lord. Amen. Heaven beckons us this morning. To have a heavenly perspective. For we are not the people of this world. We are here in this world for a time being. We are pilgrims. We are just passing by. The writer of Hebrews says, Here we do not have an enduring city. We look forward to the city whose, whose architect, Builder, hallelujah, is God and God himself, hallelujah. We are in this world. Jesus said we are in this world, but we are not of this world. Praise God. Paul writing to the Colossians says, yes, we live in this world. Praise God. But we set our eyes, hallelujah, up above, up to the heavens. Having her heavenly outlook, heavenly perspective. So this morning... Heaven beckons us, saying, catch, catch the outlook of heaven. And what is that? Heaven is saying, blessed are the dead, praise God, who die in the Lord. If it was only blessed are the dead, that would have baffled us. But the scripture is very clear. Blessed are those who die in the Lord. In the Lord. Blessed. Happy. Fortunate. No. Not the ones who are, those who are left behind. Not the ones who are going through these seasons. But the one who has gone before us. Blessed. Fortunate. Happy. Praise the Lord. Yes. It is very sorrowful to see our loved ones depart from this world. Their love, their affection, their touch, their smile. How they occupy our life. How they occupy our time. All these things we will miss. There is no denying of it. What are we left with? But silver tears, golden memories. Praise the Lord. We cherish those golden memories. And as we cherish those golden memories, family, it's okay to let those tears run through. Praise the Lord. Amen. But God wants us to have a different outlook. He wants us to know that they, praise God, those who have departed from us, those who have died in the Lord, they are happy and they are fortunate. Amen. Praise God. Blessed are the dead who die in the Lord. Praise God. You cannot die in the Lord unless you live 
in the Lord. You cannot die in the Lord unless you live for the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Those who have given their heart to the Lord Jesus, those who acknowledge the Lordship of Jesus upon their lives, those who have received the offer of salvation that is exhibited on the cross of Calvary, when Jesus took upon himself the sin, the sickness, and the curse of mankind, they are the ones who live for the Lord, who live in the Lord. It is about them that the Bible says, they are the ones who are identified as ones who die in the Lord. The Bible says they are blessed, they are happy, and they are fortunate. Praise the Lord. Why? Praise God. It is simply because the Bible says they ought to rest from their labor. They have to rest from their labor. <laughs> Brother Abby mentioned, how hard is that work? And we know back in India, they don't have a two-day weekend. You know, we work here. We are in America. We work here. We look forward to that weekend. We get two days off, and the two days just fly by. And we look forward to the next weekend. But back in India, all of our parents, they all work six days. Six days. And still, they found time for fellowship. They found time to spend in prayer. They found time to get themselves immersed and saturated in the service of the Lord. Amen. Could you detain? He worked very hard. He labored. Labored to keep his family. To labor to sustain his family. Praise God. Amen. Heaven determined that it was time for rest. Praise God. Amen. Jesus is a big, great rest giver. Praise God. Amen. Jesus, when he was on the earth, gave the clarity call. Come unto me, all ye that are laden and heavy burden, and I will give you rest. Praise God. Those who have found rest from the burden of sin, they will find rest in the Lord when they die in the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Rest from the labor. A well-deserved rest. Praise God. They ought to rest from their labor. Praise God. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Blessed are those who die in the Lord, for they will rest from their labor. So that, that looks like a defeat. Is an avenue that leads to rest for the children of God. That that looks like disappointing is an avenue that leads to reward for the children of God. As the word says, their deeds will follow them. Praise God. Amen. Yesterday evening, this morning, we heard about time about how he was meticulous. And systematic in giving. His pastor, Pastor Chris, testified to it. The treasurer of the church, Anichai, testified to it that he was meticulous and systematic in giving to the Lord. We heard about his testimony how both of them, Uncle and Andy, was involved in evangelism, reaching out to the neighborhood. Passing on the message that can give life and hope. Praise the Lord. Amen. Throughout the course of their lifetime, he has done what he could for the sake of the kingdom of God. And the Bible says, they shall rest and their deeds shall follow them. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. When their deeds follow them, 
One day when he stands before the Lord, praise God, at the judgment seat of Christ, where the rewards, where last will be evaluated, where last will be examined, he will receive the reward. Jesus speaks about it in Matthew chapter 10, 42. If you give a glass of cold water in my name, there is reward for it. Amen. If that's the case, how much more for this family? How much more for Kunyotichai who has given himself and his resources for the sake of the kingdom of God? Praise the Lord. The writer of Hebrews says in, in Hebrews chapter 6, God is not unjust to forget, praise God, what we have, what we have done for him and for his people because we love him. Praise God. Yes, he's not unjust. He is faithful. He will remember it. And on the right day, here and there, we will be rewarded. So that, that looks like a defeat is an avenue that leads to rest. It's an avenue that leads to reward. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. That's what the Bible says. Hallelujah. They are blessed. Praise God. Salvation is a free gift from the Lord. But if you want to receive something from the Lord up there, here you got to labor for the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise I want to conclude with another voice that will be heard from heaven. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. John the Revelator says, I heard a voice from heaven. Praise God. My Bible tells me that we will hear another voice. Hallelujah. Praise God. The Bible says the Lord Jesus himself will come down from heaven. Amen. With a loud command. Praise God. And the voice of an archangel. And the trumpet call of God. And those who are died in the Lord. They will rise up first. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. And then we who are alive. We will be transformed within a twinkling of an eye. Amen. And we shall be with the Lord. Amen. Praise God. Folks. There is a time. When we are going to hear. Another voice from heaven. Praise Amen. God. Hallelujah. Those who are died in the Lord. Those who are resting in his presence. Hallelujah. They will hear that voice too. Hallelujah. Praise God. When we who look for Jesus on this earth. Praise God. Could you be time who died in the Lord. Will hear that voice when Jesus comes. Hallelujah. He will be resurrected. Why? Because Jesus defeated death. Jesus was resurrected from the dead. And those who are also received the resurrected Savior in their heart. When the Lord Jesus comes, praise God, they will be resurrected. Hallelujah. That is the hope that we have in and through Jesus Christ. Amri Andy, Jolie Evie. Lena, Stanley, grandchildren, praise God, all family members. Yes, Kunikitain is not here. He is resting with the Lord, but the trumpet will sound. Yes. Praise the Lord. Amen. Jesus is going to come. When he comes, he will be resurrected. Praise God. If we are still around, hallelujah, we will be transformed within a twinkling of an eye. And we shall see him. What a glorious reunion that will be. Praise the Lord. Listen to the voice of heaven. The voice of heaven speaks. Saying, have a heavenly perspective this morning. As much as there is pain in our heart. As much as there is sorrow. We are not hopeless. 
For we hold fast to the word and the voice that comes from heaven. Praise God. Amen. Yet a little while, this journey is going to come to an end. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. In a few minutes, we will conclude the service here. And we will go to the burial ground. Praise God. Hallelujah. Life is a journey. It's a short journey. But in this journey, you and I have to make a decision that will determine our destiny. That's why the songwriter goes like this. Age alpha, nera matra. Praise God. Hallelujah. Yatra tirua. Hallelujah. Praise God. We're going to sing that song. Brothers, come. Praise God. Age alpha, nera matra. Yende Sin will be silent. Hallelujah. 
There is a place the Lord has prepared for us, including Kuduni Chan and those who have gone before us in the Lord. We shall also live a life that we can reach there. I want to very quickly, in just one minute, in the last moments of this precious life on the earth, we struggled and he breathed the last moment as we came. 1055, like he called and said, Pastor, he has promoted to glory. Amen. He is God in the presence of the Lord. And we came, they ministered to him, and we looked at his face. Even after his spirit is gone to the Father of all spirits, there is such a calmness, such a peace, and a countenance on his face. Amen. I have heard many times those who do not know the Lord. Their face expression at the last moments are terrible. People are terrified. They refuse to go. But precious is the death in the sight of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, I want to close with this. Those, any of those who are here this morning and listened to us last night, without Christ, life after this world is empty. It's terrible. Nothing will come out of it. But with Christ, you have eternity, you have heaven, you have fellowship with God forever and ever. Amen. But you have to make that choice, as Pastor Philly said. In this point of life, you make the choice. After this life, you do not have that choice anymore. So I encourage you before you leave this place, if you do not know Christ, make the opportunity to know Him. Because as Uncle and Auntie as they did, Uncle and Auntie together, they were passionate about winning souls for the kingdom of God. May the Lord use this opportunity for those who have drifted away also to come back to walk in fellowship with God with eternity in perspective. Thank you, man of God. We have edified and increased in our faith. May the Lord comfort and continue to uphold each and every member of the family. They will in the potato leave us some more time. And he, for the heavy and lean and the children, for the jolly, shivu, so Sister Joe, she and the family, be with each and every one of you. God has given a promise. He'll be with you to the end of the world. He will never leave you, forsake you. God bless you and give you strength. Just a couple more things. We will pray and conclude the service here, the homegoing service. Due to the arrival of late arrival, their family member, Philip George, will come forward. Just take two minutes as he was traveling. Once he's done, Brother Stanley John will come forward to bring a vote of thanks and representing our church, Brother George Thomas, and the director of this funeral home, Mr. Harper, will also bring announcements. After that, Pastor Joy Joseph will come forward and forward and give us prayer and benediction and conclude the service. Brother Philip George, please. My name is Philip George, and I would like to say a few words about my uncle, who went to be with the Lord last Saturday. I had the privilege of watching him interact with his family, and I learned what it meant to be faithful, to be purposeful, and to be loyal. He was always there no matter when they needed him or what they needed him for. He considered everything good in his life a gift from God and he gave richly out of what God had given. He was a man of integrity in all he did and generous with all he had. He loved the Lord and was faithful to the church. He had to suffer a bit towards the end, but he was able to beat the suffering because he cannot follow him where he is now. 
I also thank God for uh, having helped my uncle to stand this street till the very end. Praise the Lord. I have this big Bible in hand, so you know what is coming next. No, don't be scared, it's not a sermon. You know, the pamphlet that was given to us on the top, it says, Service of Celebration. So I was just trying to make you laugh because it's a celebration. We've been sitting serious for the last two days. We've been hearing so many good things about Papa here. I am the son-in-law of the family. I thank God for having given him 76 years on this earth. Of which 24 years I was able to be a part of the family. There are many things that were said about him over here the last two days. And that pretty much has covered most of the things. His spiritual life, his personal life, his personal interactions, all those were mentioned over here. I would just say one or two things because my responsibility is to give the word of thanks. But what is it if a son-in-law doesn't reflect on what his experience has been with his father-in-law. The first two years of coming to the United States, I lived with them in Queens. And at that time, I had the privilege of watching him a little more closely than I was able to after that. One thing I found about him is, that he was a straight shooter. He was honest and forthright about all his comments and about all his opinions. Whatever he said, he said from his heart and he believed what he said. He was of the kind which the current generation, which is an acronym generation, would say was a whiz EK. That means what you see is what you get. He was transparent. No tricks, no decoration, no pretense. He was precisely what you saw in him and what he said was precisely what he wanted to say. Two things that stood out when I came first to this country was Pastor Finney already used the word, he was meticulous. He spoke about his meticulous, how meticulous he was in church and about giving and all those things. I found him to be meticulous in other areas also. Some of you would have seen him Whenever he comes to church or other places, you would have seen him. His shirt and his pants are very well ironed. You know, when I lived with him, there was one day where he would get all his clothes out and he would iron them properly. Wherever he went, he had to have those iron shirts. He was meticulous when he went out in his dressing. Not just that. He was also meticulous when it came to cleaning. He took up the responsibility of cleaning the house. And when I say meticulous, this is what it is. After the house is vacuumed, we would all stop over there. What I saw about him is, he had a little brush. Especially around the table, the dining table, he would literally comb through the carpet. That was how meticulous he was when it comes to cleaning. And that went through in different aspects of his life. He was meticulous in all that he did. There's a lot of things that I can say. But in the interest of time, let me get into the responsibility that I was given. 
First of all, I thank God. Again, for the 76 years that he gave him on this earth. And I am very thankful to the Lord for the last two weeks of his life. I was able to spend with him. You know, when I think it was Wednesday before he passed away, his brother and his sisters called from India. And as they spoke to him, he was, they were crying. But he said, we are all waiting to see the Lord. Why are you guys crying? Just pray. Even in the last moments, he had his faith intact. When my wife Jolly came, for the last maybe a few hours, he had his eyes closed. He had his hands on his chest, was not speaking much. But as soon as she came in, he lifted his hand from his bed and he thanked the Lord. Amen. On Friday, of course on Thursday, Abby had gone back home to Houston. But on Friday he said it will be good if you call him. Again, when he came in with the children, he lifted his hands up on the bed and he thanked God. I thank God for the privilege that God gave me to spend those two weeks with him and to know him a bit more closely. Now I would go through the list of people I have here to thank. First of all, Pastor Chris Samuel and his family. I know for the last six years you have stood by this family. Through every moment you have been encouraging them, you have been praying for them, Whenever they needed you, you were with them. And we are very thankful for that. Next up is Pastor Gigi Vergis, who is my pastor and is the pastor of Bronx Full Gospel Assembly. After we end our service over here, he is the presiding minister or the officiating minister for the burial service. Pastor Gigi Vergis, thank you for accepting our invitation and for being here. Pastor Finney Samuel, thank you for being here. He's family, yet we are thankful that he accepted his, our invitation. He is the pastor of India Pentecostal Assembly in New York. Pastor Abraham Matthew and family, we heard from him yesterday. He exhorted and he also conveyed his condolences yesterday in his message. Pastor, uh, pastor Abraham Matthew and family, I know many times you were a comfort to the family, you visited them, and you comforted them whenever possible. We are thankful for all that you did for them. To all the church members of the Bethany Full Gospel Assembly, and to the youth leaders of the Bethany Full Gospel Assembly, thank you. In the last two weeks that I was there, I was able to see you guys in action. I mean, let me tell you, it was an eye-opener. You guys were there at all time praying for Papa. You were there to do whatever we needed. You transported us from the airport to and from the airport. And you all catered to us, saw to it that we were well fed. Thank you for all that you have done. Thank you once again. To Dr. James Turner and Mrs. Linda Klein of Texas Oncology, we thank you for the last six years for the compassionate care that you provided to our dear Papa. It is the Lord's, it is the Lord and also your care that was able to keep him alive and strong for the last six years. Once again, thank you. To Dr. Weathers and the staff at Vitas Hospice, we thank you for the comfort care that you provided in the last week. Your care was able to keep him pain-free till he breathed his last. Thank you very much. To our neighbors on Bradbury Drive, we know how much you cared for us. And we know some of you were here yesterday to express your condolences. We thank you all once again for all that you have done. 
To Mr. Cody Walker, the director of this Lucas Funeral Home, and to the staff, we thank you for giving us this facility and for all the arrangements that you have made over here, and especially seeing to it that everyone, everything, everything went on in order. To Mr. D. McIntosh, the director at Blue Bonnet Hills Memorial Park, we thank you for the arrangements that you have made for the final burial. Pastor Matthew Samuel and Bethel House of Prayer, after the burial service, we will be gathering at their place of worship for the fellowship lunch. Pastor Matthew Samuel, thank you for arranging the place for us. And finally, to all the relatives and friends who have gathered here, I know many of you have traveled from far. Some are from New York, some from New Jersey, some from Oklahoma, and some from Georgia, and some have driven the miles from, uh, from uh, Houston. I know you all have come all this way. Of course, our relatives and some friends from Florida, we thank you for being here and for comforting us in this time of sorrow. We have been grieving, but we thank God for the hope that he has given us that one day we will meet Papa in heaven. Thank you once again to all of you. Praise the Lord. Before uh, I make any announcements, I would like to say a few things about uh, Kunyurja and Ramama, and it would be ungrateful from our part, uh, myself and my family, but also from our church, if you don't mention those things that, I, that were the relation that we had with, uh, with our church and Kunyurja uh, uh, and Ramama. We have known Kunyurja and Ramama uh, shortly after they moved from New York to uh, Dallas. And even before that, we knew uh, we are known AP and family for some time. And Kunur uh, Mama was so dedicated to our, our growth of our church that uh, when we needed a church building, we, we came to a, a crossroad. As you may, many of you know who went through that, know that we came to know that we needed a lot of money at the end. And we, uh, we had a committee meeting and uh, we were discussing everything. Then, when you just said, I'm going to give you some money, he loaned some money, which was in addition to what the uh, good contribution that he made to the church. And he told us, don't worry about repairing it. I think he was uh, 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 of uh, uh, India, I mean, Parenting for Gospel Assembly and also a member of our executive committee. And Kunyur Chan and uh, Amama are the pioneers of our church on the door to door evangelism. It started after they came to our church. We, 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 uh, we are really grateful for what uh, those things that they have done uh, for our church. And uh, you can still see hundreds, if not thousands, of tracks in their bedroom also in our church lobby. Praise Lord. Um, at this moment, I'm borrowing a statement from our Papa. He said, Kunyurijan, what is the Shkalgilum? Deva Teyum, Deva Makalayum, Deva Dasamayim, Almatamayim, Sneiki, Bhumayim, Kedena, with Kudumu Vaidam. Kataru Sotra, we pray that may God strengthen Amama, Edi, Jodi, and all your families. And God bless you all. Now the announcement. After this uh, funeral service, we have the church and the family have arranged a uh, lunch at the following address. The, the address printed here is, uh, is, has changed. The new address will be 901 Clinic Drive, QS. The address will be shown in the, on the projector later and later. If you have any questions, please, uh, the number also will be displayed there for the, uh, some those numbers, pastor or some of those ushers they will be able to help you. And the rest of the uh, things will be directed by the funeral home personnel. May God bless you all. Thank you. Thank you so much. Just to mention that the Intimate is the same place at Blue Bonnet Hills Memorial Park at 5725, which is on the back.
way at the bottom, 720 North Industrial Boulevard. That is incorrect. The correct address is on the overhead. Mr. Parker, he's the director. If you could come forward, just give us uh, the instructions right after prayer and benediction, how to proceed. We would really appreciate that. In just a moment, we will be dismissing you. You can pay your final respects as you exit the chapel, this side door, it goes directly to the parking lot. If you will go to your cars, uh, we will be escorted to the cemetery. So just come in the procession to the cemetery. I would ask that uh, after the pass by, if the pallbearers will remain in the chapel, we will give you instruction at that time. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Parker. Just again, please be mindful of the family, those who are viewing for the lifetime. Make it quickly. You can say your respect to the family at a later time. We will have to go through very quickly as Pastor Joy is coming to forward and to conclude this service with prayer and benediction. Thank God for his life. We each one of us will truly miss him. We will miss his chair, that prominent place in the church, in the board, in all activities, and especially in our life as young pastors. He was such an influential man in our life, such a prayerful man. We will miss him as family youth also, but we will see him on the other side on the glorious day. If you have that assurance, just lift your hands and thank the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's stand in the presence of God as we pray and conclude this service. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. You Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Praise you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Praise you, Father. They were
Just kind of huddle a little bit. Okay. Well, just it'll take a few minutes. We'll need at yeah. least 20, 25 minutes. That's fine. That's fine. Okay. Yeah, I think we ought to get that up the steps. No, it won't go up the steps. We'll have to carry all the way. Okay, so how, how will we hold the weight there? And, um, you know. Once we get to the place here, it, it can hold the cap. It can hold the cap.
Right through. There's a little bit of more room for those who want to come closer. We're going to pray and start the intimate. Thank God for giving us a blessed service last night, this morning, and a beautiful day. Let's continue to look in the face of our God as we bid farewell and commit the mortal remains of Kundur Bichan's body into the supernatural and the Father of all spirits. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, eternal God, Father of all spirits, we praise you and thank you that you are in control of our lives. Amen. But the moment dear man of God was born till last Saturday, you are watching over him, you are controlling his life. In your precious moment, in the ordained time of God, you called him back to his eternity. Thank you for the promise 
precious in the sight of God are the death of his saints. As they are absent from the body, they are in the presence of the Almighty Lord. Amen. We glorify you for the blessed hope. Yes. As we continue this service here today, let the presence of God hover over us, O oh God. Let the anointing of God be upon thy servant yes, as he ministers this Amen. morning. Let the word of God increase our hope. Yes. Let the faith multiply in our lives. Let the word of God be so assured in our lives that we can continue to live for you and glorify you. Yes. Thank you that we will hear the trump one day. The mortal become immortal. And Lord, we know that even the mortal remains of uncle will be transformed yes. by the power of the resurrection Holy Hallelujah. Spirit. We thank you for that hope. We praise you for this beautiful day. We commit the rest of the service in your hands. In the name of Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. 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 church and also the immediate family, their relations, giving me the opportunity to be here with you and uh, conduct this funeral service here. It is an honor and a privilege. I appreciate that. A month ago, I came to show this house and at that time, I did not think I would be coming back to Dallas again so soon. But it was God's will. May 7th, I believe. About 10 to 3 a.m., the new design went to PC Turn and so Even though we say that this is the homegoing service. But he has been there over a week with the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. He is in the presence of the Lord rejoicing. Hallelujah. We are sorrowful. There is grief. There is sadness. The Bible doesn't say that we should not be sorrow. So many people mention the doubt. Even though Jesus knew that he will raise Lazarus from the dead, but still he wept in that So, when our beloved one departed, there will be a vacuum. The first thing we communicated, we interacted with. He's no longer there to communicate or their present to us today. So we will be lonely and sad. There will be grief. But that is natural. The vacuum made by that particular person cannot be covered by any other person at that moment. So we have to remember the new Chan is no longer here. His body is here but he is in the presence of the Lord. Amen. About death, there are so many things we can say. There are so many philosophies. People think differently. Every human being is unique. And because of the thought process, they can interpret and think different ways. But let me tell you what the Bible says. We heard from scriptures and messages Yesterday and today, so many things were spoken. And we heard a very good message from Finney, who is a very, very uh, close friend of mine in a way. We've been in New York for so long, you know. When he was the BYFA president, then taking charge of the youth pastor and the pastor, uh, God is using him, you know, the message he gave. 
and very good message we had about the voice from heaven. Praise the Lord. There are three different voices we can hear. The voice of the Lord, the voice of the world, the voice of Satan. Your destiny will be depended on which voice you listen and follow. And uh, when we listen the voice of God, when we listen the word of God, your destiny will be different from any other voices you Amen. listen to. Amen. Uh, I don't want to take much time. Uh, let us read one scripture I gave that is Romans chapter 5 verse 12. I have given that scripture. Romans 5 12, therefore just as sin entered the world through one man, and death through sin, and in this way death came to all people because all sinned. So sin entered into the world by which death also came in. In the original plan of God, there was no death at all. And, uh, and at the end also, there will be no more death. So then because of sin, and even if uh, there was sin, the lifespan was much longer than then. Because of sin, again, God reduced that to 120 years. Then at the time of Moses, in Psalm 90, it again reduced to 70 or 80. At the time of David, it again says, like a shadow, four finger long. So we know the space, the lifespan reduced and reduced and reduced. Now because of sin, and uh, let us read a few more scriptures. Let's read uh, Psalm 90, verse 1 through 4. Lord, you have been our dwelling place in all generations. Before the mountains were born, or you gave birth to the earth and the world, even from everlasting to everlasting, you are God. You turn man back into dust and say, Return, O children of men, for a thousand years in your sight are like yesterday when it passes by, or as a watch in the night. Praise the Lord. We hear from Moses. The, the dust goes back to the dust there again. Return to the dust. And then he also calls the people. Let's go to another scripture. Psalm 39, 4 through 7. Lord, make me to know my ends and the measure of my days. What it is that I may know how frail I am. Behold, Thou hast made my days as an handler, and mine age is as nothing before thee. Verily every man at his best stayed his ultimate vanity. Surely every man walketh in a vain show. Surely they are disquieted in vain. He heapeth of riches, and knoweth not who shall gather them. And now, Lord, what wait I for? My hope is in thee. My hope is in thee. thee. Amen. We are not hopeless people. Amen. We have a hope. The hope is the Lord is coming. That is the reason why. When we read Romans 15, chapter, uh, Romans 11, 15, there is a verse there. The second part says, when God accepts the Jews, there will be resurrection of the saints. Malayalatil Paranyal Deyum Yehudane Angigari Kumbal Adende Artha Vandana Vishutan Maruda Uyarpa. Vishutan Marade Uyarpa. So when God accepts Jews, we know He has to. So with that, something will happen. What is that? The resurrection of saints. saints. So that is why we have that hope. Not far from now, there will be a resurrection. And that is the reason why we worry and uh, we want to read. Let's go to Romans 6.23. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. The ages of sin is death. But we are class 
just by because of through Jesus Christ, we have eternal life. Even though sin causes death, but we are overcoming that through the gift of Jesus Christ, that is eternal life. Let's go to Hebrews chapter 9, verse 27 and 28. In as much as it is appointed for men to die once, and after this comes judgment, so Christ also having been offered once to bear the sins of many, will appear a second time for salvation, with our reference to sin, to those who eagerly await Him. Now we should remember, it is appointed for men to die. There is no escape of death, even though so many things that I won't die. We, do not, we are not thinking about death, but it is appointed for everybody to die. But there is a resurrection also after that. There is a judgment after that. You know, we think about, oh, we are all, you know, animals. That is why we think about the way we think sometimes. We don't have to give any account to anybody. That is not the way God created. God created, we have to give an account. That is why there is a judgment. Amen. And uh, even death and birth is constant. Famine or, you know, uh, plague or war, nothing will increase death. Because death and birth is constant. Only those who will escape death is those who will be re resurrected why those who will be caught up while they are living they will escape death none of none other people will be escaping death so we have to know that everyone born in this land will unless I am the living one, I was dead, and behold, I'm alive forever and ever, and I hold the keys of death and Hades. Jesus Christ, in the book of Revelation says, I was dead, but now I am alive. Not only alive, but also he has the key of death and hell. Uh, I don't want to explain much because I, I want to shorten the time. Let's go to the next scripture that is 1 Corinthians chapter 15. We will read 13, 5 to 41, one person. But someone will ask, how are the dead raised? With what kind of body will they come? How foolish what you sow does not come to life unless it dies. When you sow, you do not plant the body that will be but just a seed perhaps of wheat or of something else. But, give, but God gives it a body as he has determined, and to each kind of seed he gives its own body. Yes. Not all flesh is the same. People have one kind of flesh, <coughs> animals have another, birds another, and fish another. There are also heavenly bodies, and there are earthly bodies. But the splendor of the heavenly bodies is one kind, and the splendor of the earthly bodies is another. The sun has one kind of splendor, the moon another, and the stars another, and stars differ, differs from star in splendor. Amen. Uh, now, the next person will read from 42 to 49. So is also the resurrection of the dead. It is sown in corruption, and it is raised in incorruption. It is sown in dishonor, it is raised in glory. It is sown in weakness, it is raised in power. It is sown in a natural body, it is raised in a spiritual body. There is a natural body and there is a spiritual body. And so it is written, the first man, Adam, was made a living soul. The last Adam was made a quickening spirit. Howbeit, that was not the first which is spiritual, but that which is natural, and afterward, that which is spiritual. The first man is of the earth, earthy. The second man is of the Lord from heaven. As is the earthy, such are they, also that are earthy and is that heavenly such are they also that are heavenly and as we have born in the image of the earthy we shall also bear the image of the heavenly 
from 51 onwards. Behold, I'll see you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed in a moment, in the tingling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed, for the corruptible must put on incorruption, and the mortal must put on immortality. So when this comes, corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, death is hallowed up in victory. O oh, death, where is thy sting? sting. O oh, grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks to be God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. O oh, death, where is your victory? O oh, death, where is your sting? Now we have to remember through Lord Jesus Christ. We don't have to worry about death because we are passed by, praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, that doesn't have the thing, praise the Lord. Amen. Glory to God. As God took man from the dust, the dust will go back to the dust, and the spirit will go back to the Lord. Varghese Matthew, known as Kunyudi Chayan, who lived for the last 76 years, loved the Lord. We are now burying his body to become ashes to ashes and dust to dust. You are dust and you are returning to the dust. Amen. Reading from Revelation chapter 14, verse 13. Then I heard a voice from heaven say, Write, Blessed are the dead who die in the Lord from now on. Yes, says the Spirit, they will rest from their labor, for their deeds will follow them. The deeds will follow them. The new generation will continue the work they did for the Lord. And every, every generation after generation will continue the work. And that is very important for the immediate family, children, grandchildren. 
whatever good things your affection did, you have to follow. That is what it says. Your deeds will follow them. Isaiah chapter 26, verse 20. Come, my people, enter thou into thy chamber, and shut thy doors about thee. Hide thyself as it were a little moment until the indignation be overcome. Even though we say, my name will be born. But here it says, come my people. You know why it is saying, come my people? Because God is not going to call every name because we will be what up in the tingling of an eye. So what he's going to say, come my people, enter into thy chamber, shut the door, hide thyself for a moment until the indignation be overpassed. Now let's read Daniel chapter 12 verse 13. As, Daniel 12 13, as for you, go your way till the end. Amen. You will rest and then at the end of the days, you will rise to receive your allotted inheritance. Amen. Daniel. The beloved one of God, God said, Daniel, go and rest. You will come up to receive your rewards. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. The body of our Jesus Matthew is being buried here. When Jesus Christ comes in the cloud with his angels and the sound of the trumpet and every saint is rising up you Vargis Matthew will rise again Amen. to be with the Lord forever and ever and ever and ever Amen, Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise. Praise. Now we are going to read from Revelation chapter 21 Verse 1 through 5. Revelation chapter 21, yes, verse 1, one through, through 5. Yes. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and there was no longer any sea. I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God prepared as a bride beautifully dressed for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Look, God's dwelling place is now among the people, and He will dwell with them, and they will be His people. And God Himself will be with them and be their God. He will wipe every, every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death, or mourning, or crying, or pain. For the old order of things has passed away. Praise God. Amen. There won't be no more death. Hallelujah. Yes. The dwelling place of God with His people. God will wipe away all the tears. Here we have tears. Here we have pain. Here we have grief. Here we have sorrow. But God will wipe away the tears. Amen. And we will be with him and no more death. Now we have death, but at that time there won't be any more death. And now we can sing a song.
want to request all the people, pray for the people who are going through their grief, the sorrow. Let the Lord strengthen them, the word of God and the Holy Spirit comfort them. And uh, let us follow the work that you know, the child did for the Lord. So that will be a rewarding thing. And uh, once again, I want to thank all of you for being here. Again, continue to pray. And uh, let us read, I am going to read one more scripture. That is from Philippians chapter 4, verse 7. And the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, Amen. shall keep your heart yes, and mind through Christ Jesus. Amen. Let us pray. Thank you. Heavenly Father, Hallelujah. once again we are thankful. Praise you. Lord, you gave Hallelujah. a good weather. Amen. Yes. Thank you. You gave everything perfect, O oh Lord, so far. Hallelujah. Once again we are thankful. Thank Lord, you. guide and strengthen Jesus. all the people. Yes. And uh, Lord, we pray for the immediate family. Yes. Let the word of God and the Holy Spirit comfort. Hallelujah. Yes. Guide them, strengthen them, O oh Lord. Praise. Let the presence of the Lord be real to Amen. each and every one. Praise. Let hear, let them hear your voice, O oh Lord. Praise. The comforting voice, Amen. the guiding voice, Amen. the strengthening voice, O oh Lord. Praise. Holy Spirit, lead them. Hallelujah. <laughs> the church, the pastor, and all the leaders, also for everybody. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of the Heavenly Father and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit Hallelujah. With you all, Amen. and especially with the grieving family. Yes. Amen. 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 Victory through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you all for coming. Thank you, Pastor Gigi Wargis, for officiating the service here. Immediately to follow, we will have a fellowship lunch. The address have been already given. Uh, 7 9 9 9 Clinics. So please, we want you all to join us on behalf of the family. Once again, your auntie, your heavy, Lena and the children, Shibu, Jolie and the children as a church, and myself, wife and the family as a church family. We will continue to be here in prayer, in support, and above all, God's continuing presence and His never-ending promise be with each of the family members and all those who have gathered. Thank you all. Once again, let's just give thanks to God for making a beautiful day so yesterday and today. Thank you, Lord. We praise Amen. you. We worship you. We honor you, Father. Glorify. Hallelujah. They will take a few more minutes to remove the boards. Families welcome to stay, but we need to vacate this area so they can proceed. Uh, the family has flowers. If you want, the, they should be available. Uh, Mr. Parker will have available. You can place it on top of the coffin. She's holding on.
Thank you. 